In the deepest recesses of the world's most ancient text, there lies a myriad of stories and teachings, told and retold for millennia. Yet, nestled among these familiar narratives, there exist cryptic truths that have quietly slipped through the cracks of collective understanding. These are not matters of divine revelation or grand prophecy, but rather, they are the hidden whispers from the pages of history, the unacknowledged secrets that defy conventional wisdom and challenge established norms. They are the echoes of the past that reverberate with a unique resonance, demanding a second glance, a deeper inquiry. These whispers call into question the very foundations of what we think we know, daring us to look beyond the painted frescoes and the hallowed halls of tradition. Brace yourself as we embark on an enlightening journey, navigating through the labyrinth of ancient texts, where every turn offers a prospect of startling discovery. Hold on to your convictions, for they are about to be tested. This is an expedition into the heart of the Bible, but not as you know it. Prepare yourself, for we are about to reveal the secrets that the church doesn't want you to know. The First Secret as we delve into the labyrinthine corridors of biblical text, we encounter our first surprising revelation. Imagine standing in the grandeur of an ancient cathedral, gazing upward at the intricate stained glass windows. There, in vibrant colors, the saintly figures of old seem to ascend to heaven, carried aloft by divine wings. It's a comforting image, promising an eternal reward in the heavens for the virtuous. But the sacred scripture subtly suggests a contrary narrative. Take a moment to consider the words from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 29, where the apostle Peter, addressing the multitude, unequivocally states, Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. Similarly, the gospel according to John, chapter 3, verse 13, clarifies, no one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. There it is, quietly tucked away among the merry adverses, a poignant contradiction to the commonly held belief that the virtuous ascend to heaven upon death. Even the beloved David, the shepherd turned king, a man after God's own heart, did not ascend to the heavens. This biblical secret, once revealed, unveils an intriguing discrepancy and invites us to question and explore further. What other mysteries might the sacred text hold, waiting patiently to be discovered? Let's continue our journey as the next secret awaits. The Second Secret Venture deeper into the maze of biblical text, and there, in the shadowy alcoves, lies another clandestine truth. This one strikes at the heart of an age-old belief, the immortality of the soul. It's a comforting notion, offering solace in the thought of an everlasting spiritual existence, independent of our mortal bodies. Yet, nestled within the time-worn pages of the Bible, we find an intriguing contradiction. Consider the words of Ezekiel in chapter 18, verse 20. The soul who sins is the one who will die. The verse does not speak of physical death alone, but seems to suggest a spiritual death, the death of the soul. This revelation is further echoed in the New Testament, in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. It's a concept that starkly contrasts the widely held belief in an immortal soul, but there it is, quietly nestled within the sacred scripture. It's a secret that poses profound questions about the nature of our existence and our understanding of life, death, and what lies beyond. Unraveling these biblical secrets does not undermine our faith but invites us to explore it more deeply. It encourages us to seek a more nuanced understanding of the divine mysteries and to question the beliefs we've come to accept without inquiry. The Third Secret as we traverse the hallowed halls of churches, the glistening icons and revered statues bear silent testament to the stories and figures of the Bible. Yet, here in the intricate tapestry of the scripture, 
we discover a secret that seems to challenge these very practices. Turn your gaze towards the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verses 4 to 5, which house the well-known Ten Commandments. Here, we find an explicit decree. You shall not make for yourself an image in the firm of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. This prohibition against the creation and worship of images presents an intriguing paradox. Despite its clear biblical origins, it stands in stark contrast to the plethora of religious artwork that adorns many places of worship. Could it be that this practice has somehow strayed from the explicit teachings of the scripture? These biblical secrets are not meant to incite contention, but to spur introspection and deeper understanding. They invite us to critically engage with our faith, to question, to learn, and to grow. The fourth secret. As we forge ahead on our exploratory journey through the expansive terrain of biblical text, we encounter yet another intriguing secret, this one concerning the very image of Jesus Christ himself. The conventional depiction of Jesus, one that has been etched into the collective consciousness of billions, often presents him with flowing locks of hair cascading down past his shoulders. But as we delve deeper into the cultural and historical context of the New Testament, this familiar image is called into question. In the bustling city of Corinth, the Apostle Paul penned a letter to the early Christians, a letter that is now part of the New Testament as 1 Corinthians. In chapter 11, verse 14, he writes, Does not nature itself teach you that if a man wears long hair it is a disgrace to him? In the societal norms of that era, long hair was generally associated with women, while men typically kept their hair short. This cultural context suggests that Jesus, living in the same era, likely adhered to the societal norms of the time, and hence, probably did not have long hair. This revelation challenges the conventional depictions of Jesus and serves as a reminder of the importance of considering historical and cultural context when interpreting biblical passages. The Fifth Secret Deeper still we journey into the heart of biblical text, where yet another secret patiently waits to be unearthed. This revelation concerns a practice deeply ingrained in Christian culture, the observance of the Sabbath. Traditionally, Sunday is celebrated as the Sabbath day, a day of rest and worship. Yet, as we comb through the layers of scripture, we find an intriguing deviation from this well-established practice. Consider the fourth commandment, as dictated in Exodus 20, 8 to 11, remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor, and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. When we recall that the Jewish calendar starts the week with Sunday, it becomes clear that the seventh day refers to what we know as Saturday, not Sunday. This revelation raises compelling questions about tradition and scriptural interpretation. How did the practice of observing Sunday as the Sabbath become so widespread? despite the biblical reference to the seventh day. The answer lies in the complex interplay of history, culture, and religious evolution. As we delve further into the heart of the biblical landscape, a cascade of revelations unfurls before us. Each one is like a puzzle piece, offering a fresh perspective and challenging traditional views. These secrets span across diverse topics, each one holding the potential to reshape our understanding of this ancient text and its teachings. Consider, for instance, the Biblical New Year. Leviticus 23, 5 marks the beginning of the year with the Passover, an event that occurs in the spring, not in the depths of winter as our modern calendars would have us believe. This alone hints at a profound disconnection between our contemporary practices and the traditions of the ancient world. Then there is the matter of Jesus' birth. While Christmas is universally celebrated on December 25th, the Bible does not provide a precise birth date for Jesus. Some scholars suggest that based on the shepherds' outdoor activities described in the Nativity narrative, Jesus' birth might have occurred in a warmer month. The resurrection of Jesus, 
The cornerstone of Christian faith is traditionally believed to span over three days and three nights. However, the timeline between Good Friday and Easter Sunday morning doesn't fully align with this duration, inviting us to revisit the original texts and their interpretations. Further, the concept of eternal punishment in hell, a fear-inducing doctrine in many belief systems, seems to be contradicted in Malachi 4, 1 to 3. These verses suggest that the wicked will be destroyed, not tormented eternally, challenging the widespread understanding of hell's nature. Lastly, we arrive at the concept of being born again, rather than referring to conversion to a specific religion. John 3, 3 to 5 alludes to a spiritual rebirth, a profound inner transformation that transcends religious boundaries. The journey through this intricate maze of biblical secrets is not one of mere intellectual curiosity. It is a journey of introspection, of questioning, and of growth. Each secret unraveled, each contradiction explored, deepens our understanding and appreciation of this timeless text. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.